In 2013, Disney released the movie Frozen. It currently ranks as one of the highest grossing animated movies of all time, won a slew of awards, one and only Adele Dazzy, and has children everywhere singing Let It Go really, really badly. Let it go! Let it go! But this movie also helped bring Walt Disney back to life, which is ironic, as I thought he was the one that was frozen. Wow, those are some loud crickets. <laughs> Proceeding the film was an animated short film called Get a Horse, a mix of the classic 2D Mickey Mouse shorts of the late 1920s and 1930s, who then crosses back and forth with the modern 3D style. It's a fun short and a technical achievement of coordinating two animation styles together seamlessly. But in order to remain faithful to the original shorts, they reused voice recordings of Mickey Mouse's original voice actor, Hang on, pal. Here we go. Walt Disney. <laughs> this isn't an unusual thing. In the Peanuts movie, they reused archival recordings of Bill Melendez's performance as the original Snoopy and Woodstock. <laughs> this makes it a kind of tribute to the legacy voice actors. <laughs> particularly if they passed away. But what do you do if you want a dead actor to say something new? There's actually a few approaches to this. No, not that. You can replace the actor. Jim Varney voiced the character Slinky Dog in Toy Story 1 and 2, but died 10 years before Toy Story 3. So Blake Clark took over the role and managed to give the character a very similar voice. (laughs) A more extreme example can be seen with the CGI Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One that used a lot of effects to digitally recreate Peter Cushing, who had died in 1994, to varying degrees of success. This sort of thing is a bit of an ethical minefield and has actually caused some actors to protect their image after death. I mean, imagine being forced to act in something completely against your will. No, no, make it stop, make it stop! Plus, the technology isn't quite perfect yet and tends to skirt between Uncanny Valley and pure jank. In Back to the Future 2, when Claudia Wells, the actress for Jennifer in the first film, couldn't reprise her role, the entire opening sequence was remade shot for shot, with Elizabeth Shue in the role instead. Alternatively, you don't even attempt to match them up to the predecessor. Like in The Matrix Revolutions, casting Mary Alice to play the Oracle to replace the deceased Gloria Foster, and even lampshade this casting change in the film. Do you recognize me? A part of you. Yeah, that's how it works. I barely recognize you, lad. You're like a completely different actor. Come along. This is essentially rewriting the film to explain their absence, like in Hunger Games, when a scene planned to have Philip Seymour Hoffman in it was changed to have his character send in a letter instead. You can use the unused. Carrie Fisher died before the release of The Last Jedi, but her character is set to appear in Star Wars Episode Nine. So the filmmakers plan to use unreleased footage from Force Awakens and The Last Jedi to work it into the film. Sounds like that'll be clunky as hell. We'll have to fight our way out. Are you ready? Yes. But it's got to be better than giving her the Tarkin treatment. Or you can use what you have and just make it work. Don Hertzfeld's charming short film, World of Tomorrow, features the voice of his four-year-old niece, who was recorded playing and just had to work with what spontaneous... Na- <laughs> Thank you, Rick. And just had to work with whatever spontaneous natural dialogue he had as a result. I have no idea what you're talking about. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. In South Park, after Isaac Hayes quit the show prior to his eventual death, the creators wrote him out the show by re-editing his previous recordings in an obvious clunky way. I want to stick my balls inside your rectum, Kyle. Incidentally, it was always assumed that Isaac Hayes quit because he disapproved of the portrayal of Scientology, but it later came to light that he had had a stroke and lost some cognitive function. So one of his unknown Scientologist entourage members resigned on his behalf without him knowing, which is just really sad. This is getting way off topic, but you know, since Isaac Hayes' reputation was kind of tarnished over this, I felt it worth mentioning here. We shouldn't be mad at Chef for leaving us. We should be mad at that fruity little club for scrambling his brains. So the makers of this Mickey Mouse short, like South Park, combed through all of Walt Disney's recordings and like World of Tomorrow, bent the story and script around what they could find. I'll save you! But they ran into a problem. Walt Disney never said the word red. This is Mickey realizing he's in color for the first time, so it's either cut the joke or somehow make Walt Disney say red. So, how do you make a dead actor say something new? Oh my gosh! Our associate editor went through and pulled the R E D from three different words and we put it together. I had a go myself. Red, 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 red
So with a little sloppy editing, I managed to make Mickey say red. <laughs> Mine's obviously not perfect. The Disney team took nearly two weeks just to get one word to sound right. <laughs> In The Force Awakens, Alec Guinness... Wow, Star Wars love using dead actors, huh? Alec Guinness makes a brief voice cameo thanks to some simple audio editing. They got a line of him as Alec, as Obi-Wan Kenobi saying, Afraid. Don't be afraid. And then they just cut the A and the D off. Afraid. 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 Huh. I wonder if there's more examples of people remixing video and audio samples to make characters say things they never meant to. Perhaps like a whole genre of them. On YouTube... Oh, shit. Looky what we have here. Sonic's fingers. The name's Jock, and the address is 2212222B2222221 speed. Oh, that isn't smoke. It's steam. Steam, steam from... Uh, really? From, uh, from the steamed clams we're having. You can send link for pizza. Oh, you haven't found your smoke. I've got my heart set on Taco Bell. I'm filling my vagina with birds. I can't stand it. Pizza time. Yeah, well, I didn't think it was so fucking funny. My unicorns. Oh, YouTube poop. Where there's smoke, they pinch back. YouTube poops are a form of video mashup using pre existing material to create something entirely new and funny. And that's what Disney did. They essentially made a poop of Walt Disney's voice to say something he never said, which in turn is something I never thought I would say. There's a fine line between making a sincere tribute and a gross opportunistic cash grab, and with ever-improving technology, these lines are getting even more blurry. But perhaps with faith to the source material and loving consideration, we can have Walt Disney stick around for a little bit longer. Isn't that right, Mickey? (laughs) Oh, look at that. I'm going to hell. Please help me, Mickey. (laughs) Oh! Do you still think that guy's funny? Also, fun fact, the makers of Get a Horse claimed that Mickey's voice was entirely Walt Disney. They actually used a line from his replacement voice actor, Jimmy McDonald. Come on! Come on, little fella! Who actually goes totally uncredited, so... There you go, Jimmy. (laughs) Just credited you now. (laughs) Thank you very much, and please consider supporting me on Patreon.